Hey yo, what's up my little coders? Let me show you in this tutorial how to solve the lead pop question number 518. Coin change part 2. And yeah, by the way guys, if you want to see how to solve the coin change part 1 as well, I already uploaded a video on my channel, so I will attach a link in the description below in case if you're interested. Okay, so what do we need to do here? You're given coins of different denominations in a total amount of money. Write a function to compute the number of combinations that make up that amount. You might assume that you have an infinite number of each kind of coin. Here are some examples, guys. So imagine if amount would be equal to 5 and we would have like the coins of, the, of denominations 1, 2 and 5. The output should be 4 because, because there are basically 4 ways to make up that amount. You can just take one coin of the denomination of 5 and you will make up that amount. Or you can, can take like... 2 coins of 2 plus 1 coin of 1, it also will be 5 in total. Another way would be like just 1 coin of 2 and 3 coins of 1. And like the last way, just you take the coin of denomination of 1 and you give like 5 coins of this denomination. In case if you cannot make that amount, like in this case, if the amount is equal to 3 but you only have like 1 coin which is equal to 2, you cannot make like exactly 3, in this case you just return 0. Yeah, if you just have like the amount and you have the same coin, yeah, the answer should be 1, simply as that. This is basically what we need to do, guys. How can we do it? Same as for the coin change part 1. Basically, it's a, it's a dynamic programming question. So, you can solve the problem by splitting it up into some sub-problems. And by solving these sub-problems, you will also find this, you will also solve the final problem as well. Okay, let me just quickly write the code and I just will explain you what I mean exactly, and we'll go through it with you in a few seconds. Just stay with me. So guys, what do we have here? As I just mentioned, we are going to solve this question dynamically, right? That's why we create our DP array of size amount plus one. It will basically allow us to calculate all the sub amounts, you know, how many ways there are, like, for example, if the amount is equal to 5, let's consider like, you know, all the sub amounts. If, for example, amount is equal to 0, amount is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and then like until we reach this 5. And, you know, so we'll split it in the sub problems, right? And, you know, once you calculate the first sub amount, you can use this like, basically calculations to build up on top and, you know, calculate the next sub amount. So this is dynamic programming, basically. And to calculate our first sub problem, if the amount is equal to zero, we just do it like on the line four. So this is our first sub problem. In this case, we basically say that the amount of ways to make up that amount is one because not, it doesn't matter like what kind of coins you have in your input array. If the amount is equal to zero, there's basically only one way to make up that amount. It's just like to return nothing. So we put one here. After that, let's iterate through all of our coins, like coin by coin. And for each coin, let's update our DP array. So we declare a variable i here, i is equal to coin. i cannot be less than coin because, you know, if the current sub amount is basically less than the coin value, in this case, like, you cannot do anything with the coin which is greater than the amount. So we say that i is less or equal than amount. It allows, you know, to go like from all the, to, to iterate like over through all the sub amounts, including the final amount. Then we do like i++, plus plus, and then like we update our dp array. We say that dp of i is, is like equal to dp of i plus uh, dp of i minus coin. So because we do like plus or equal, we use the calculations for the previous sub problem to update the current sub problem. And then we return basically the last value from our dp uh, array. Okay, what it all means. Let's take an example and let's go through the code again, right? For example, we can use the example from here. However, to make it a bit more interesting, let's maybe, you know, change the order. Let's put two here and one here. What it will mean, guys? You know, we call our function called change. We create the DP array, right? And of size six in this case, because amount plus one, five plus one is equal to six. So six values, and you know, when you create your DP array, Initially, all the values will be equal to zero. Okay, all the zeros here, then we go on the next line, we update the first value. So the first sub problem, we put one here. 
This is like for the amount which is equal to zero. After that, we'll start, we'll start to iterate through all of our coins, and the first coin from our coins array is equal to two. So we take the coin which is equal to two, go inside the second for loop, i is equal to coin, so i is equal to two, then basically we go here, dp of i, so dp of two, this value, then we do like plus equal dp of i minus coin. i minus coin is the value before from which like you can jump to the current value, like by the same amount of steps as like the denomination of the coin. So if amount is equal to zero, and then like you give the coin of the denomination which is equal to two, you will appear at the place here. And we do like basically a plus equal, so we have zero here, that's why we do like, we put one here. This is our first calculation, okay. Next iteration of this more, of this like for loop, we will increment the i, i will be equal to three, the value here basically it's zero, then we do like dp of three, so the value here plus equal dp of i minus coin, this is the value here, and yeah, which is like the equivalent of the amount of one, and like if you have the coin of the nation of two, like there is no chance that like you can make up that amount with that coin. So we do plus or equal, and like yeah, zero stays as it is. The next iteration of the for loop, i plus plus, so you know the value here. Dp of i, dp of this value plus equal dp of i minus coin. The value here, we'll put one here. The next iteration of the for loop, same thing, but dp of i minus uh, coin is zero, so this value stays as it is. Okay, we calculated all the sub amounts for the coin of the denomination of two. Now let's use these calculations and let's go and let's consider the next coin. And because we already calculated the sub amounts for one coin, we can use this data to also, you know, combine two coins together and calculate like the the amount of phase like to make up that amount. So the next coin is equal to one. This is our current DP array, guys. So next iteration of the for loop, i is equal to coin, i is equal to one, because right now we are considering the coin which is equal to one. Okay, DP of one plus equal DP of i minus coin, one minus one is zero, index zero, we have one here, we put one here, and like indeed, if you just have like two coins of two and one to make up the amount which is equal to one, there's only one way to just give the coin of the denomination of one. Yeah, that seems correct. Okay, next iteration of the for loop, i plus plus, so i will be equal to two, the value here, dp of i plus equal dp of i minus coin, dp of i minus coin is the value here, plus one, put two here. And indeed, if you have like two coins, one and two, there are basically two ways to make up the amount which is equal to two, because you can only like take one, two coins of the denomination of one, or like one coin of the denomination of two, so two possible ways, two is here, perfect. Next iteration of the for loop, i will be equal to three, value here, then like the current value, and we do like plus equal dp of i minus coin, so this is the value here, that's why we put two here, Next iteration of the for loop, the i will be equal to four, value here. Again, the same thing. So we take the previous value, we put three here because one plus two. Then next iteration of the for loop, so i is equal to five. Then we do like dp of i plus equal dp of i minus coin. dp of i minus coin is basically the value here. That's why we put three here. Okay, guys, then the final iteration of the, of the for loop, we'll consider our last coin, which is equal to five. Right, but we start basically at the last value because i is equal to coin, so i is equal to 5, the value here, and then like dp of i is equal to dp of i plus dp of i minus coin, so 5 minus 5, basically 0, the first element from our dp array, we do plus 1, we put 4 here, and like guys, indeed, the output should be equal to 4, and then we just in the end return this like the last element from our DP array. You know, we solved all the sub problems, and you know, by solving the sub problems in the end, it helped us to solve the final problem. So we just been building on top like of some sub problems, you know, step by step. And yeah, this is dynamic programming, guys. Okay, let me run the code now. Let's see if it works or not. Perfect, it does. Let me submit, guys. 
Perfect guys, 2 milliseconds, 100%, simply as that. I hope it was clear, I hope you understood everything. If you did guys and if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and subscribe, challenge your friends to see if they can solve this question or not. Um, yeah, and remember guys, remember, lead code of the day keeps unemployment away, so make sure you do lead code and I will see you in the next video guys, good luck.